The Hero Two Doors Down, Chapter Four. All this waiting to catch sight of Jackie was wearing on me. He'd been my favorite player since Dad announced that I was old enough to start listening to Dodgers games with him on the radio. That was on my eighth birthday last June, during, during Jackie's rookie season. Dad said that would make me into a true Dodgers fan. Then maybe I could go see a game live at Ebbets Field. I'll never forget it. It was a warm Brooklyn summer night. Mom agreed that Dad and I could have dinner on the stoop. She fixed us a picnic meal of fried chicken, french fries, salad, and Kool-Aid. We ate with a small transistor radio between our plates. Dad sat on the top step. I took my position just below his knees. We turned the radio loud and I chewed softly. I didn't dare talk. By the time the game got underway, the porches of our neighbors were filled with eager Dodgers fans. A few women were scattered in folding chairs, supervising as kids played on the sidewalk. Part of me wanted to play, but my father's voice kept pulling me back to the game. Jackie Robinson is a rookie, Steve, Dad said. The Dodgers are in first place and drawing big crowds to Ebbets Field. Jackie's got a lot to do with that. He's batting over 300 and has four homers so far. He's been hit six times by pitchers and been insulted plenty just because he's a black man in a previously all-white game. Jackie hasn't let the pressure get to him. The whole country knows about Brooklyn now. We're special. That's something to be, pr to be proud of, son. Dad stopped talking right when the announcer introduced Jackie. Then he said softly so he wouldn't miss a second of Jackie's at bat. Listen closely now, Stevie. You'll hear what I'm talking about. I bent down until my right ear practically touched the plastic box. Jackie's hit got him on base, and within minutes he was threatening the pitcher from third base. Boy, is he fast, I thought. Jackie Robinson takes a large lead off third base, waits for the Pirates' Fritz Ostermuller to take the full windup, and breaks for home. I sat up straight. Tension permeated the hot air. I fixed my gaze on my dad's face, seeing the joy in it as Jackie stole home base for the first time in his Major League Baseball career. Dad jumped to his feet and lifted me high into the air. Our screams of joy were echoed throughout the neighborhood. At that moment, I knew Jackie Robinson was my guy. That was a year earlier. Since then, I'd read Jackie's book, My Own Story, and studied his baseball cards until I was an expert on Jackie's first year in baseball. The 1947 Dodgers were the first time that a racially mixed team ever played in the championship. Now, with the 1948 season looming, I wondered how Jackie would do this year. More important, I looked over at the house where Jackie was set to live. I wondered what he was really like. The closer I came to actually meeting Jackie Robinson, the more I worried that I'd be disappointed. I really wanted to like him and to have Jackie like me, but what if he was too busy to notice me? Or what if he saw me and didn't care to get to know me better? Was it even possible for a boy to have a famous man as a friend? I was driving myself nuts trying to figure out who Jackie was, so I decided to ask my mother. Mom, do you think Jackie's nice? We were cleaning up my room. Mom stopped vacuuming the rug and looked over at me. I guess so, she said. He's definitely a strong and courageous man. And a great baseball player, I added. He's going to play second base this year. Dad says that's his best position. I can't wait to go to Ebbets Field to see Jackie and Pee Wee work together. Your father told me last night that the Dodgers opening game is on April 20th against the Giants. The Dodgers home opener is April 23rd, Mom said. That's less than two weeks away, I exclaimed. Think Dad will take me to the Dodgers home opener? Not sure, Stephen, but keep up your good behavior at home and school. Anything's possible, Mom replied. I'm doing my best, I said. Yes, you are, Mom agreed. Now put on your shoes and come down to the kitchen for breakfast. I followed my father, my mother to the kitchen. Dad was already at the table with his newspaper in hand. We ate together. Since it was Saturday, I didn't have school, but my father had to work. Saturdays were Dad's busiest day. Mom and I were walking to Dad, walking Dad to the stoop when I had an idea. Dad, you make and sell custom shoes, right? That's right, son. Do you think you can make a special shoe for Jackie? I bet he'd like that. 
a cleat that would protect him in case a mean player tried to spike him again. Dad told me once that players often slid into second base with their cleats pointed forward. It was dangerous and could lead to a serious injury for the second baseman. I didn't want to see Jackie get hurt. You know, Steve, that's a wonderful idea, Dad said he, as we, he waved goodbye. Mom and I picked the brightest cherry blossoms off the giant tree in our front yard. It was still too early to drop by the Robinsons, so we sat at the kitchen table and read the Archie comic strip. Mom and her friends liked the love triangle between Archie, Betty, and Veronica. I liked all the crazy things Jughead would do. While we cleaned up the kitchen, Mom chatted on and on about Mrs. Robinson. I could tell she was nervous about meeting a famous woman. You know, Steve, I admire Mrs. Robinson as much as you do her husband. He, she's so elegant and beautiful. I was a bit surprised that my mom had paid such close attention to Mrs. Robinson. I'd never heard her talk about any of the other Dodgers' wives. She and Jackie met in college, Mom added. I read a story about them in the Brooklyn Eagle last year. University of California, wasn't it? Jackie lettered in four sports at UCLA in just one year, I answered. He was a famous athlete even before he joined the Dodgers. I read his biography. And Mrs. Robinson is a nurse, just like me. Mom, it's after ten, I whined. I was impatient to meet our new neighbors. Can we go? I was blown away when Mrs. Robinson opened their door and smiled down at me. She is pretty, I thought, and nice. A little boy clung to her leg. I'm Sarah Satlow, and this is my son, Stephen. We live two doors down and wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood, Mom said. How nice of you, Mrs. Robinson replied. I'm Rachel, and this is my son. Jackie's a little shy right now, but give him a few minutes and he'll want to play. How old are you, Stephen? I turned nine in June, I said, then peeked around Mrs. Robinson so I could see into the living room. There was no sign of Jackie Sr. Jackie is almost two and a half, Mrs. Robinson told me. Steve and I picked these, for, these from our tree for you, Mom said, handing Mrs. Robinson the bouquet of flowers. They're lovely. Thank you, Sarah and Steve, Rachel said. Is Jackie Stephen, Mom scolded me. I mean, Mr. Robinson at home, I asked. Mrs. Robinson chuckled. No, Steve, but I'll tell him you that you stopped by. Are you a Dodgers fan? You bet. Great. Would you like to go to a game with little Jackie and me this summer? You've got to be kidding. Would I ever? If I couldn't go to the Dodgers opening home game with Dad, at least I'd be able to go to a game with Mrs. Robinson. Pretty cool, I thought. I'm serious as long as your parents give you permission, Mrs. Robinson replied. Please forgive my son, Rachel. Steve and my husband, Archie, share a deep love for the Dodgers and for your husband. He's thrilled to meet you and a bit too excited to have you as a neighbor, my mother explained. I can imagine, Mrs. Robinson said then gave me another warm smile. Jack and I love children, Sarah. You don't have to apologize. I'd invite you inside, but we're still unpacking boxes. Of course, I completely understand. It was lovely to meet you, my mother said, tapping me with her elbow. Nice to meet you, I echoed. Thank you for the warm welcome and beautiful flowers, Mrs. Robinson said. We'll see you soon. I was totally disappointed and didn't feel like pretending. My head was hanging low as we left the Robinson's front yard. All I could think of was, would I ever meet Jackie Robinson? Every day during the two weeks leading up to the Dodgers opening game, I woke up thinking this would be it. I decided that the only way I'd spot Jackie Robinson coming out of his house was to be visible. I came up with a plan. On Monday morning, I got up at 6, dressed for school, and had breakfast with my dad at 7 o'clock. That left me with an hour before school to spot Jackie. I parked myself on our stoop, read the sports page, and kept my eyes on the red brick house two doors down. After school, I played stoop ball and finished my homework outside, waiting and hoping Jackie would come home while I was outside. No luck. Days passed without a single sighting. I can't believe he's two doors down and I haven't bumped into him. I vented to Cena on our walk to home from school one afternoon. Steve and Jay sat low. Let, give it a rest, Cena shouted at me. I was shocked. Didn't she get it? He was my hero. He was my neighbor. Spotting Jackie Robinson was my, the only goal. Speaking directly to him would be a bonus. My whole life depended on a handshake. A wave of the cap. Hearing Jackie say my name, Oh, Cena, 
I replied in disgust. If you weren't a Yankees fan, you'd get it. The closer we got to the home opener, the more obsessed I became. The Robinson family had lived in the neighborhood almost two weeks, and I still hadn't spotted Jackie. The next thing I knew, it was April 20th, opening day. The Dodgers were opening the season on the road. Dad and I sat on the front porch listening to the first game of the 1948 season. The Dodgers were playing their crosstown rivals, the New York Giants, at the Polo Grounds. With Jackie on second and the newly acquired catcher, Ray Campanella, excuse me, Roy Campanella, at home plate, the Dodgers were once again making history. They were now the first major league team to have two black players in the regular lineup. It was a three-game series at the Giants Stadium. By the end, the Dodgers took two out of the three games. Friday, April 23rd, our beloved Brooklyn Dodgers returned to Ebbets Field. Their home opener was against the Philadelphia Phillies at 2 in the afternoon. I begged Dad not to send me to school. I simply had to stay home and listen to the game on the radio. Please, 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 Dad, I pleaded. He looked up from his plate of scrambled eggs and wheat toast and smiled at me. Got a surprise for you, son. I sat up straight in my chair. What is it, Dad, I asked. While my curiosity mounted, my father toyed with the salt shaker, then reached into his pocket and pulled out two tickets. He handed them to me and I jumped out of my seat. This is unbelievable. I thought you'd forgotten or didn't want to go. Dad, I'm the happiest kid in Brooklyn. I leaned in and kissed my father on his cheek. You've worked hard to improve your attitude at school and home, Dad said. Miss Malikin's reports are all good and I wanted to share this special day with you. I've never been so excited, I told my father. Maybe now I'll finally meet Jackie Robinson. Think so, Dad? I don't know, son. It's possible. Mrs. Robinson said that Jackie liked children, I told him. Maybe he'll come over to, to me after batting practice and I can get him to sign my baseball, I said. If you meet Jackie Robinson, I imagine he'll sign your ball. Can we go early? That's the plan, Dad said with a chuckle. Dad and I took the train to Ebbets Field for five cents. On the ride there, I rehearsed my first words to Jackie. I turned the new baseball in my hands. I'd planned on meeting Jackie in our neighborhood, but it didn't matter. If I saw him, I'd tell him that we're neighbors. That would be just as good. Dad, were the tickets very expensive, I asked. It was worth every penny. I don't know when you've been this happy. I am happy, Dad. I will remember this day always, I said, leaning in and hugging his shoulder. Thank you so, so much. I looked away. My smile was mixed with tears in my eyes, and I didn't want my father to see them. I went back to rehearsing what I'd say when I met Jackie Robinson. I live two doors down from you, I repeated softly. Yes, that would make me different from all the other kids. Or I could just say, I'm your neighbor. Yes, I decided that was simpler. We reached our train stop and exited in the direction of Ebbets Field. Let's wait here, son, Dad said. We stopped by a side gate of the stadium. Why are we stopping here, I asked, wanting to go inside the stadium and make my way down to the field so I could get autographs. I'm meeting someone, my father replied. But Dad, I moaned. I'm going to miss batting practice. I tossed my baseball into the air and caught it. As we waited, I threw the ball higher and higher before getting bored. Dad, I pleaded. Patient, son. What time is it? My father looked at his watch. It's noon, he reported. The game doesn't start until 2. What time does batting practice end? Our team warms up last. That should be around 12.30, Dad replied. We've got time. I kicked the stadium wall hard, then remembered that Ebbets Field was old and fragile. At least that's what everyone was saying. It had been built in 1913, right in the middle of the neighborhood. The stands were so close to the field you could hear players talking to each other and see the expressions on their faces. But now they needed a new stadium. I wondered if they'd knock Ebbets Field down and build a new one in the same spot. Gee, Dad, I said after we'd been standing outside the park for what seemed like a very long time. I'll never get any autographs here. We need to be inside near the bullpen like the other kids. In a minute. You keep saying that, but we're wasting time. Let's go, please. I pleaded unsuccessfully. Frustrated, I turned away from my father. When I turned back around, Dad was grinning. I looked around again and spotted two men walking fast and right towards us. Dad, I said, how'd this happen? What? I think it's Jackie and Roy Campanella, I said. So it is, Dad replied. 
Are they coming to meet us? Could this be possible? Had my father made this happen too? My heart pounded against my chest so hard it frightened me. I was frantic. The moment I'd been waiting for had arrived and I couldn't think of anything to say. My father grabbed my hand. Let's go, Steve. I know this is what you wanted. We closed the gap between the famous ball players and ourselves. I looked up at my hero and my mind went blank. I stood frozen. Steve, Jackie said, extending his hand towards me. My eyeballs nearly popped out of their sockets. He knew my name. I reached out and took Jackie's hand. No words came to mine or out of my mouth. I just stared like a starstruck kid. Thank you for the cherry blossoms. They look great on our dining room table, Jackie said easily, like we were friends already. My wife tells me that you're one of our biggest fans. My head bobbed, but I still couldn't speak. For weeks, I'd played this very scene over and over, and now that Jackie was standing in front of me, I balked. In my head, questions collided and disappeared. I couldn't speak. I'd like you to meet Roy Campanella, Jackie said to me. Again, I dropped the ball and nodded at Roy instead of speaking. Forcing a smile, I stared up at these two great men, hoping they'd understand. I'm afraid you've rendered my usually talkative son speechless, Mr. Robinson, Dad said as he stepped in to fill the void. I'm Archie, Steve's dad. This is such a thrill. My son has been on neighborhood watch for weeks, hoping to catch a glimpse of you. He was rehearsing his first greeting up until a few seconds ago. Guess all the practice fogged up his head. I listened intently as my dad talked baseball with Jackie and Roy. He made it look so easy I couldn't even get my own name to come out of my mouth. Jackie turned away from my father and looked directly at me. Now that we have a few home games, you'll be seeing me around, he said. I smiled. If words wouldn't come out, at least I could get my mouth to do that. I handed Jackie my baseball and watched as he and Roy signed it. Thank you, I whispered when the autograph ball was back in my hand. My dad shook hands with the ball players and wished them a successful season. Steve, Roy, and I have to get inside for batting practice. Why don't you drop by the house sometime? My son would get a kick out of having a big boy to play with. Okay, I whispered. Thank you, Dad replied. I looked over at my dad. He'd set this up just for me. But how? When Jackie turned to leave, I called out, What should I call you? Jackie flashed me a smile that would warm the North Pole. Call me Jackie.